we'll dismiss our youth tonight. If it was in that class, they'll gather at that door right there. We'll dismiss them tonight. To get our youth pastor in our class this morning. Amen. I want to welcome y'all tonight. Bless our community church. Thank you. Thank you for that you're coming. All right, young folks, come on. Come on, break loose. Let's go. Come on. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for our youth group now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for our young folks now. We pray that you bless them abundantly with the Word of God. Bless our teachers, God, those that are going back to, to teach our young and our intermediate and our young adults now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen. I'm going to be speaking tonight, and I spoke on this topic before. It's been a long time, but I'd like to speak tonight uh, on a specific topic that's really something really lacking. Living life with integrity. Living life with integrity. For a Christian, integrity is 100% faithfulness. I said 100%. Not 20%. See, you see, see, you break. Uh, people have no trust in us when we only live up to half what we're supposed to be. People have no confidence in us when we live up to 80% of what we're supposed to be. Let a Christian stumble just once. It destroys his testimony. Listen, let a drunk get drunk. He just got drunk again. But, but a Christian, when he loses or he lapses in his faithfulness, his integrity is lost with just about everybody in his surroundings. Just once. Isn't that right? Just once. When you, um, when you um, think about some of the great men that have fallen in the Scripture, when you think about them, most people think about, as soon as they speak Samson, what do they think about? Come on, somebody say something. Delilah. <laughs> he fell to a whore. Just like that. Samson, and, you know what you know what they equate his name with? Delilah. Samson and he fell with a whore. His integrity got broken because of a whore. And she, matter of fact, she was a Philistine whore. She was a whore. She was not only a, a whore, but she was a Philistine whore that wasn't even supposed to. He wasn't even supposed to touch her. Isn't that right? Now, you could go through many more. And I mean, I, that was just a, a, a big one that we could say that you could say, um, but many times throughout the scripture. Uh, a Christian's integrity is broken by one, usually one, lapse. And those that realize it, you have a hard time ever getting them back. Amen? A very hard time. Open your Bible with me tonight, to, uh, and we're going to speak on integrity and living life. Turn back up to that uh, first frame, please. Joshua chapter 9. Uh, we're not going to Joshua, we're going to St. Matthew, but I, I, that scripture is there for a purpose. I want to encourage you to read this scripture. Because Joshua, I'm going to tell you about Joshua's integrity. He, he, was a, he was an integral man of God. Brother James, he would not break his integrity. If he made a commitment, even if he realized that somebody had lied to him, he still kept his commitment because he was a man of God. Back in the day, and when I say back in the day, certainly not this day, people's word isn't really good for nothing anymore. It just don't stand. But back in the day, when you were a man or woman of God, when you said something, you did it regardless. And Joshua had, um, they had this great battle with Ai, and um, they and God said, "Go destroy it all. Don't touch nothing." Of course, there was one that brought some of the the, the gold into his camp. Uh, his name was H. And besides all that, but there was some other people that was that that heard of what Joshua had done. Let me just say this now, real quick, before we go into scripture. And uh, they just heard what Joshua had done and how he how God was blessing him. They was destroying every enemy. So this band of men come in and told them, "We're from a far country," and. Um, we want you to make an alliance with us that, that you won't destroy us. And they come in with the They put on tore up clothes and, and they put and they made themselves dirty and they made they made themselves look poor and sixteen. They made themselves they lied to Joshua. And so he said, Boy, they look like the they look like the homes, but we're just gonna make it. We're just gonna let them come on in, be a part of our, our nation. And come to find out, they was rich people, but they heard that his power was with God. But Joshua done made a covenant with him. He done made a commitment to him. And even though they lied to him, he said, my commitment, it could, he could have nulled it. He could have not said, you lied to me, so my, my commitment. 
he stood with his commitment regardless. But what he did, he said, okay, I'm going to let you come on into the nation, but you know what? You're going to be a slave the rest of your life. And he made them, um, he made them carpenters, slavery in, in work. He kept his commitment, but they had to follow through. I'm just saying, when you make a commitment, you keep that commitment. I don't care whether everybody else breaks their word or not. We got to be promise keepers. We got to be commitment keepers, and we got to be covenant men and women of God. The Bible said this in in St. Matthew chapter five. Are you there? Look with me to one one verse of scripture. And we're going to close. I mean, we're going to close. We're going to enter into the sermon in prayer. Verse eight says, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." Let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name, give us the ability tonight. You already have. But open our understanding of how important integrity is tonight to the Christian. Not just to the world and to other people, but God, to you, having our integrity with you. So, Lord, tonight, let us be promise keepers, covenant walkers, those that live their life by integrity before you. In Jesus' name I pray, you might be seated. I want to read a couple of stories tonight, and I hope it will resonate with you. A wealthy businessman lay on his deathbed and his pastor came to visit him and he talked about God's healing power and prayed and he prayed for him he was very wealthy when the pastor was done the business said preacher if God answered your prayers and he heals me I'm gonna give the church a million dollars miraculously <laughs> the businessman was healed got better in a few short weeks it was like nothing had ever happened had his complete health back. Several months later, <laughs> of course, couldn't find him in the search warrant. Several months later, the, pre- the preacher happened to run up on him on downtown at the sidewalk. He said, whoa, 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 hey, come here, I want to talk to you, buddy. You know, when you was in the hospital dying, and they said you wasn't going to live at all, you promised God, and you promised me that you, when, if God would heal your body, you'd give a church a million dollars if you got well and he said not only did you get over it it's like you never had it neither me nor God has received a cent of that million dollars yet and the businessman looked at him and said preacher did I really say that he said I guess I showed you how really sick I was that sounds about right man you know that happened to me here at this church some people stood right here 15 years ago we're expecting a large money some large sum of money stood right here I said God can't even be bear witness to you I'm gonna give this church a quarter of a million dollars in it can <laughs> stood right pray for us pray for and they're still alive and they're still doing all right and we ain't seen a cent of that money yet that just shows you how really sick they must have been. Integrity. Integrity means everything. Tonight we're going to explore this subject for just a, in a little. I really happened here. Excited about to come here. I'm going to give the church a quarter of a million dollars in attendance. I ain't seen a nickel of it yet. Okay. Tonight, <laughs> after 15 years ago, I didn't see them buy two Mercedes since then. Then had two Mercedes. Yet God has not received them. Not even tithe and offer. Nothing. I hope I can drive that Mercedes to heaven. Because <laughs> the Bible says if you make a vow to God, you better not break it. Okay. So tonight we're going to explore this subject and it, it, it touches every one of us tonight. Uh, and, and we're going to do it partially through the Sermon on the Mount and some other scriptures. But we're going to just see what Jesus has to say about being a man and woman of integrity. And I shared with you, if you'll back, back up one frame, please. A Christian integrity is 100. It means, first off, if you ain't going to be faithful to God, you ain't going to be faithful to nobody else. If, you, if you're robbed from God, you'll steal from the job. Come on now. If you'll rob God from his tithes and offer, you'll steal from work. When somebody, look, you'll put screws in your pocket. You'll put this in your pocket. If you'll rob from God, you'll rob from your work. How, come on, somebody. If you'll rob from God, you'll rob, you'll, you'll keep that extra change that was given back to you at the McDonald's window. Come on now. If you'll rob God, if you won't be 100% faithful to God, you sure ain't going to be 100% faithful to nobody else. 
So I, I know this ain't a real happy subject tonight. You don't hear it taught on much because people, they regard their money more than they do their faith or anything else. So I just want to preach tonight. Just, the Bible says in James, if you'd look with me to James chapter 5, uh, it says, Above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, swear not. But it just make, gives me the heebie-jeebies when somebody says, I swear. I said, do anything, but don't swear. <laughs> don't swear. It says, don't swear by any other oath, by heaven, by earth, or any, but let your yea be yea, and your nay, nay, lest you fall into condemnation. See, Satan is the evil one. He's a murderer, and he has been from the beginning. His only desire is to destroy you, but he, listen, if he can destroy your integrity by not holding the truth, because there's no truth in Satan, none. So when he lies, he speaks negative language in everything that he does. He's always negative. He's never positive. It's always somebody. He's a liar, and he's the father of all lies. Got a little place that I keep a little just in case. Money. Anybody, any of you guys got a little place you keep a little just in case? I hope Tammy didn't see that place. And I, she was she was looking. She already knew where it's at. Here's a hundred dollar bill. Hundred dollar bill. I don't want you to do nothing. Leave my hundred dollar bill alone. <laughs> this hundred dollar bill. It's crisp and it's folded neatly and I keep it tucked back just for maybe a time like this but if I take this thing out here then I crunch it up and I stomp on it somebody say I want it anyway I could spit on it I could I could got no water tonight. I could pour water on it. I could even drop it in the toilet and pull it back out and shake it and dry it off and you know what? It'd still be a hundred dollars. It's funny how money can hold its integrity. And he goes, so if I was to, if somebody was to walk in that toilet and this brother was floating, old Franklin was in there floating looking up at you. You wouldn't say you wouldn't flush it. Come on somebody. You say, I don't know who dropped that, but I'm finna get it out. <laughs> Me and Franklin are going to the house. He might not smell good, but he'll spin good. <laughs> no matter what it goes through, it's still a hundred dollar bill. But see, our integrity is broken by the smallest of things. This is paper. This thing has no soul. This thing has no real value to the inner man woman because you know what one good trip to Birmingham and by the steakhouse and that's gone but you know what that brother that eats that thing he still don't live this just this this right here holds this it's, it's funny how a, a, a piece of paper makes this thing a little grip in you just a little bit. <laughs> it's funny how this thing can hold its integrity but we can't ain't that crazy how a piece of paper can hold its integrity but a person that says they love Jesus Christ with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength cannot hold their integrity. Ain't that weird? Ain't that crazy, Sister Kelly? That a paper a, with, a, with a dead president on it can hold its integrity. Let me put that up right quick. That thing's got its integrity. Let me put that back in my pocket. If I sent that to the cleaners, it wouldn't come back to the crib, probably. <laughs> See, I'm going to say, I stomped on it, I crumpled it up, I could drop it in the toilet. Somebody would kid, they would not flush Franklin tonight. Benjamin. But it holds its, the value remains the same. Even though the item on the outside might have 
dung, water, trash on the floor, and it's crumpled up. It was just perfectly crispy. But the value holds the same, no matter what. See, the Bible tells us that no matter what we go through, our integrity should stand. Where the bruised are beaten, the Apostle Paul was beaten five times with a rod. Stripe, beat the meat off his back, 39 stripes. Five times he went through it. He always held his integrity. He would never surrender his integrity for anybody. He loved Jesus. He was a true believer. He Not only was he a true believer, he was a mighty man of God. You know, let me just say, a person of integrity is validated not by their words, but by their deeds. So many people say, I love the Lord, but you can't get them in church for nothing. I love the Lord, but they don't tithe. I love the Lord, but they don't read their Bible. Integrity is validated by deeds, not by words. Our integrity, how many love Jesus? Prove it. Prove it by what you do. Prove it by your worship. Prove it by your giving. Prove it by your dedication. Prove it by your love for Jesus. Prove it by your prayer time. Prove it by reading your, come on, y'all. Validate what you say by what you do. The integrity is validated by deed, not by word. Not by words. If we're pure in heart, if we're really pure in heart, we can see, it can be seen by our actions. If we're really pure in heart, integrity makes my daily actions line up with my daily, by my scriptural beliefs. If we're pure, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If, you're, if your integrity, see, if you are holding your integrity, you'll see God everywhere. I'm not just talking about you're going to see God when you get to heaven or you're going to see God when uh, you, you, you'll see God everywhere, all in your surroundings. You'll see God. Mark Twain, Mark Twain once said, speaking honestly is better. It takes a lot of stress out of everybody's life if you'll just speak truthfully. If you tell the truth, you don't have to try and remember what you said. You don't have to re- try and figure out what you told somebody before you tell somebody else. If you tell the truth, But if you don't tell the truth, you have to remember every word or you'll be caught in the lie. Integrity provides me with security in my life and with great confidence that nobody else can give me. My integrity gives me that because I know who I am. And I live by that standard that God has raised. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 9, He that walketh uprightly walks surely or you're sure of what you're doing you're sure of the decisions you're making you're sure of the people you have chosen to be in your life you're sure of what you're about to say but he that perverted his ways you're really not sure you have to wait and see how it comes out come on somebody you have to wait and see how it comes out i told my son no matter what happens we were talking about a situation the other day i said no matter what happens you're the same chris on the other side of this situation as you were before it started you're saved you're born again no matter what you go through you're still the same person on the other side as you are when you start so many people their life is is determined by circumstance and by the people and by their and by the lack of integrity they just don't know how it's going to turn out they just don't know how it's going to be in society without natural or without moral absolutes people say there's no absolute yes there is i absolutely am not drinking i don't care what i don't care how much beer they make i don't care how much alcohol they make i don't care if they start making the seltzers i don't care if they start making the wine uh, they make that make that they're making uh uh drinks now that look like uh soft drinks but they got a little out i don't care i'm not drinking it I'm not, you know what, there's, there's a lot of moral absolutes, and one of them is that I morally am not going to drink alcohol for no reason, shape, form, or fashion. I don't care how they make it. I don't care if the doctor says drink a little wine, drink a little this, drink a little that. I don't care. I am morally, absolutely, I, don't, I know what it does to a man. I know what it does to a woman. I know what it does when children see their parents drinking it. I know what the results of it is. I know what takes place. It, I am morally sound in that area. Come on, somebody. That is an absolute in my life. You drink it till your eyes fall out, till your liver gets burned up. You drink it till your kids become drunks or till you die in prison from, I am not drinking. Come on, somebody. 
I am morally absolutely no more ever will drink again in my life. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if they shut this church down. I don't care. I don't care what anybody else in my family does. That's a moral absolute. I know what alcohol does. Been there, done that. Will never go back. You say, well, what if they, what if, what if, well, you don't think it's okay? No, I don't think it's okay to drink one because one leads to two. And the next thing you know, your little child is about that big. They see mama do it. The next thing you know, when your head's turned, they're drinking it. It's a moral absolute in my life. More, that is a, you say, that's not a moral. That's a, it's a moral. I will never drink again. Ever. Come on, somebody. Ever. Never. Never. Anybody ever smoke and you quit? I breathe good today. Used to, I used to get up every morning, <laughs> I cough up a bunch of junk. Come on, somebody. I spend the first 30 minutes trying to clear my lungs so I could burn them up. Can I get a witness? I'm preaching right, y'all. I spend the first 30 minutes, I spend the first minutes trying to clean my lungs out so I could drink coffee and smoke a half pack of cigarettes. Can I get a witness? I'm just preaching right. Y'all can shout with me or you can, you can frown at me. You can look at me like I'm an idiot. I will never smoke again. I've been quit smoking for decades, and I thank God because I breathe good. I don't smell like I've been in a fire. I ain't got to. I ain't got to slip around and hide. I ain't got to run to the car and smoke one. I'm not a closet smoker. I'm not a public smoker. I am a non-smoker. It's a moral absolute. I will never set God's house, this house, on fire again. I'm, I'm, come on, <laughs> that's called integrity. Somebody else smoke? You want one of these? No, I don't want one. Get out of my car. You smelling my car up? Glory to God. I don't allow smoking in my car. I don't care who y'all. I don't care who you are. You ain't smoking in my vehicle. Come on, somebody. I love you so much. If you're going to smoke, you're going to have to ride the back of the truck. I don't care if it's 15 degrees outside. You're going to smoke. You're riding in the back because you ain't smoking up my car. I got grandchildren riding this thing. Come on, somebody. Can I get it? I, I am morally okay, I am morally sound on many issues in my life. I'm just sharing two with you that people that 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 people say, well, one or two won't hurt you in the churches. They call them sipping saints, and, and you can smoke. I don't care. I'm never going to do it again, Sam. Never. I did it. Once. I know what the results are. Can I get a witness? Many people. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. That I'm not telling you you're going to burn in hell because you're still struggling with. Fight it. Keep fighting. You'll finally find moral soundness in your life. In society, if there's no moral standards or there are no moral absolutes, then anything goes. If there was no moral absolutes, I could just have me a pack of them right here in my pocket. Come on, somebody. Or something rolled up in my sleeve and preach the gospel. Hello? Or if there was no moral absolutes, we just have a, uh, I had a, a young man here that played the drums here. His name was Tom Ledeen. He lives now in, uh, I think it's, uh, it was in, uh, but anyway, he was a, a Catholic for a long time, and I've met him. And, well, matter of fact, we led him to the Lord. He said, you know, I remember being a choir boy. He said, you ain't going to believe this. He said, but after the, after the, after the, after the, uh, after the daily mass, you know what the, he said, you know what the ministers do? You know what the priest said? They went back there, and they drank all the wine. And he said, many times they would get sloppy drunk. Now, the Catholics, they would get drunk on the wine. After everybody was left, he said, the choir boys would have to clean up after because they'd get drunk. Oh, yeah. And then right part of the choir boys going to get a witness. Thousands of them raped. If there's no more absolutes, we will never use wine in this church. We'll always use the fruit of the vine that Jesus said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new in my, you and my Father's kingdom. We would never do that. Okay, let me go. Integrity means everything. The integrity means everything. If there's no moral absolutes, Sammy, anything will go. If, we, if there's not a line drawn, you'll always stand at the edge of the line. Every once in a while, you just step on just because there's no absolutes. When people can choose what is right or wrong without having a moral absolute, there is no integrity. When the choice is up to us, there, but it's not. Here's the book of integrity. The choice is not left up to us. When you become a Christian, when you become bought with pride, this is this is what you joined up for. Come on, somebody. This is what you get. This is what this this is the moral absolutes and the standards that God has given us, and we're supposed to live by. Can I get a witness? Y'all sure are looking at me mighty. I feel something. I feel, <laughs> I feel something. <laughs> but see, integrity is, is at a great, great spiraling out of Christmas. Let me just read this. There was a bus, busload of politician one day that was, uh, they were headed to a convention. And, that, and, and uh, uh, you know how it is. They, they, they. We went through, I went through some of it today in Birmingham. They make you take detours because of road construction. 
and they took a detour down a rural road that wasn't close to them, but it was a large bus, and there was a bunch of them on it. And uh, they, they come a pretty hefty storm, and the, the driver lost control of the bus and went through a fence, went, went right through the fence, and, uh, and crashed into a tree and just scattered politicians all over the place. <laughs> scattered them like dominoes out there in the field. And the old farmer, it, he was up there in his house, and he heard a, this ruckus that he'd never heard before. And he went out there, and when the storm lit up, and his politicians was there. And uh, he went to investigate, and he saw what happened. And he went back to his truck, and he got his boys, and, and they all got a, as many shovels as they could find and started burying the politicians. That's the way they did it back in those days. You didn't go get them just <laughs> right there where they died to bury them. You watch any cowboy movies, they'd shoot them and bury them right there. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, so since the politicians never arrived at where they went, the state trooper of the state was dispatched, and they was all in a frenzy because the politicians, I mean, you know, they get special treatment. And they backtracked their route and found out that they had to take a detour, and they followed the country road, and they seen that a bus had wrecked, seen the place in the field, and it had gone into this thicket. And <clears throat> anyway, they followed out there, and they found it. And he looked up and saw the old farmer out there and his boy standing around with a bunch of shovels and a bunch of fresh graves. And the state trooper asked the farmer, said, where's all the politicians? And the farmer told the state trooper, said, we buried every one of them. He said, was they all dead? Every one of them? And the farmer replied, well, some of them kept saying they wasn't, but you know how politicians lie, so wouldn't have buried them anyway. Throughout the scriptures, throughout the scriptures, the word of God, you'll find the word honesty, purity, truth, upright. And if you go back and you completely translate all those from the Hebrew and the Greek, every one of those words will translate to integrity. Honesty, truth, upright. Brother James, there's something that's lacking today in the modern church. We play the music, we play the game, and we go back out and we in our sin, and next week we're in there do it rocking for Jesus again. Throughout the scriptures, you'll find these words, and they're impressed upon us through the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to live with integrity, to live upright, to live with a pure heart, to live honest and true, to live upright before men and if we're going to live lives of integrity we must know really what integrity looks like and it's hard to see what integrity looks like in today's society how can you how can a church call themselves a church of integrity when they don't open but one service a week people lost and undone people broken people hurting and the church their doors are darkened the preacher's sitting home counting his paycheck the the flock's at home watching the nascar and anything else that goes. You may tell you how what integrity looks like. Someone that's living this. That's what integrity truly looks like. Integrity. 100% faithful to God. 100% faithful to God through yourself. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And we're talking about the Word of God. That's the only way you're going to find out how to behave, have an integral life. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing word to read. Could I ask, is anybody taking time to read and study the Bible anymore? I'm not talking about just a little bit. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother Nathan sent back this morning. He said, man, you sent tons of Scripture this morning. I sent a long Scripture today, a pile of Scripture. <laughs> I don't do it often, but when I God quickened my heart with the Scripture, I couldn't send a piece of it because you wouldn't have got the whole picture. See, we want just a glimpse of integrity. We don't want to know the fullness of integrity. The only way we can live lives of integrity is to live lives, scriptural lives, lives by the Word of God. Women and men. I'm not talking about a universal unisex. I'm talking about men and women living the lives that God has called us to live individually, as a man or as a woman and then 
functionally as a spouse, a husband, or a wife, and then parentally as a mother or a father. You must take the role of a man, and that you must walk in the integrity of a man, and you ladies must take the role of a woman and walk in the integrity of a woman. But it's got so mixed up that men now are taking the role of women, and I'm not talking about gay, I'm not talking about homosexual. I'm talking about men doing what women's supposed to be, women doing what men's supposed to be. The Bible, God's Word, is our standard for moral integrity in our lives. It's the untrue, I mean, it's the true and unchanging Word of God. It's our manual. I know you've heard this before, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving the earth. You've probably, you've probably heard that in Bible school and other things. Everybody thinks that's silly. We teach that. No, if, 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 if adults in this room would get real with God and start living the Bible, it would change everything in our environment. It would change marriages. It would change homes. It would change everything that we are. If men would do what God said for you to do as a man in your home or as a man, as a parent, as a husband, and women, if you would do what God said for you supposed to do, not mix this thing up. God, not I'm going to say this again. God never said men and women are equal. If you find it for me, I'll preach it. I'll preach it till Jesus comes. Somebody find where God said women are equal to men. It ain't in here. It said the woman is a weaker vessel. Therefore, she's supposed to be a helper to the man, not tell the man what he's supposed to do. Can I get it with you? Find it for me. I know some of y'all getting hair lips about now, mad at me. So that whatever you want. But the integrity is you're supposed to be a woman and a man's supposed to be a man. Y'all be saying what you want to. But nowhere in here, that's why our country is falling all to hell today. It's because there's no integrity of men and women anymore. I know you ain't going to hear this nowhere. I, I know Charles Stanley and, 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 and I, know, I know Joel ain't going to preach this. Oh, glory to God. Big Joel be done kicked his butt. Come on now, I'm just preaching now. I'm just saying, call me, Joe. No, he ain't going to do it. He's got a yellow streak down his back. He's worried about his multi-million dollar house. But since I live in a little three-bedroom cottage over on, 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 over on Chapman, I ain't got to worry about it. Come on, somebody. Have you ever heard, what's that kiss? I ain't worried about it too hard. Don't worry about it. In, integrity says we're supposed to study who we're supposed to be and then live it. Come on now. No, we're in here to say women are equal to men. That's the biggest bunch of garbage that Satan has pumped into this society and this country. Amen. And I said this before, and this ain't to be funny, but back in the 60s, all women were burning their bras. Grandma's done put them back on now. Because that junk's hanging to the floor. Come on, somebody. Hello? I mean, you know, when they, when they was 19 and, 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 and all that stuff, but now, glory to God, they take that bra off and be dragging behind it. Come on, y'all. Y'all women looking at me like, come on, y'all, I'm preaching right. Mama's done put them things back on. Matter of fact, she got the support stuff now. Galluses, you know what I'm talking about. Hello? Yeah. Things are changing your mind. It, didn't, it ain't that they just got more, it's just it didn't work for them no more. Come on, somebody. Hear me. I'm, I'm preaching right tonight, and I know it's hard to receive this tonight. If, you, if, you're, if you're living outside of integrity and you want to continue to challenge God and turn away from God, but I want you to know tonight that to walk in integrity means integrating all of what God, integrating what all of God said into our life. What God says in our daily activities, in a, it means that I become a doer of the Word, not just sitting in the church and hearing it and going right back out there and doing the same thing over and making the same mistakes and, and going through the same roller coaster and having the same crash over and over and over and over. God is sick of seeing His people go through the same when He says, I have the way, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He has the way for a better life, a greater life, a beautiful life, amazing life if we would just take it and follow it with integrity. Walking in integrity means integrating all of what God says about you. See, this word tells me how to live my life. Ain't nobody going to tell me how to live my life. That's why you lie so fast. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. I'm a man. Well, that's why you met. No, you, no, 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 no. You know when you become a man or a woman? When you follow this. Because God created men and women. 
Hello? God, God, God created me. Your mom and daddy, God gave you the opportunity for life. And the only way that you, listen, the only, the only way that you're ever going to be a man or a woman is that you live the integral word of God in your life. Otherwise, you'll be a sub-man. You'll never be the man you're supposed to be. You'll never be the woman you're supposed to be. The Bible says we must be a doer of the word. Integrity. Somebody just say that. Get that on the tip of your tongue. Why you do what you do? Because I'm going to keep my integrity. The Bible says in James 1.25, But whoso looketh into the law, perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, and continueth therein, he be not, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Not a forgetful hearer. So many people come, and I can, I can, I can, I can preach about the filth of social media, and they can't wait to get to the car to see, hey, who posted while they was in church. And I'm sitting here telling you it's destroyed lives, and uh, uh, people are getting beat to death, and people are getting engaged in, and 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 we've had a couple of uh, marriages broken all to pieces by it, and families destroyed, and a couple of young girls being raped over it. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching right. Yet, yet the church t- continues to not listen to the word and go right back out there without integrity. Hello. Whoso looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continue it therein. Let me give you share this other small story with you tonight. Once there were two brothers. They were very, very rich. But they were very, very wicked. And both of them lived lives full of sin, debauchery. They used their wealth to cover up a lot of their wickedness. You know, money. People say money can't, can't buy you love now, but it'll buy a lot of cover. And both of the members were, were a member of the local, the biggest local church in town. And they used their money to be in positions of influence in that church, bought their way up the ladder. The pastor they had would have become elderly, and he had, had made a firm stand most of his life. And, and he used their money as they bought influence. And the preacher was a man who pre- he really preached the gospel. But he was in one of them voting churches where people of influence can get voted in by, by the sleight of hand. Why don't we ever vote on anything because of stuff like this? You know, I could call the vote in this church right now, and the Bible says that 50% of the people in here ain't right with God. Why would I let half the people try and vote evil in the life of those that are doing good well the preacher was a man uh, who preached the gospel and, and he had a lot of zeal and he had a lot of courage and he even lived a very integral life the congregation had began to grow at one point at such a rapid rate came that they built a new church and, and they, 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 they needed the new building because of the growth but at the same time one of these rich brothers got sick and he stayed sick for couple of years and and he messed around and died and they they had removed the old preacher during the time of building the new church and they got him a young preacher think that's going to get him a rock star preacher but they messed around and got a hold of a Holy Ghost filled preacher it was accidental of course the day before the funeral the surviving brother that was now he was doubly wealthy he was covered up well he pulled that new preacher by and he handed him the envelope. Guess what I had in it? Oh, yeah, sleight of hand. He done, he done fixed this preacher. He had a bunch of them Franklins in there. And he said, in that check, in this envelope is a check. It's large enough to pay off this church and pay you for many years to come to God. And all I want you to do is tell the people at the funeral tomorrow that my brother was a son. Everybody in church, he was wicked. You think you can handle that? And the preacher shook the brother's hand and said, I sure can. <laughs> the preacher run to the bank. <laughs> Paid the church off. Paid himself sour for 10 years. <laughs> Just exactly what the man wanted to do. The next day, the preacher stood in front of a massive congregation. Came here, wicked people. Of course, the church members were there because they, they just paid the church off. The next day, the preacher stood in front of this large group of people, 
Christopher and just and, and they were just waiting. They was on the edge of their seat. See him. The, the, the church is waiting on there to see, see what they're going to say about this wicked brother. And all the wicked people couldn't wait to hear that one of the most wicked men they've ever known was a saint. And this is what the preacher said. This man, this coffin, was an ungodly sinner. He was wicked to the core. He was unfaithful to his wife, slept with ten women. He abused his children. He was ruthless in business and stole from his partners. And on top of that, he was a hypocrite in this church. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. He kept his integrity. He paid the church off. And he had 10 years of status. And he still got to say, that man was a saint compared to his old wicked brother. See, you can keep your integrity even when the devil challenges you and tries to pay you not to. You can keep your integrity even when the devil places all kinds of things to keep you from being faithful. You can keep your integrity. The fact is God's word is clear in his instruction. God is clear for each of us. Every single, if not, not just, not just the, well, you're the preacher, you're supposed to have, you're supposed to have integrity. You're supposed to have your integrity. Shine, you're supposed to have integrity. You've got children. Brother Rick, you're supposed to have, you've got a business, man. You're supposed to have integrity. Brother Jerry, you're supposed to have integrity. Brother Jeffrey, you better have some integrity. <laughs> He's running the soundboard up there tonight. If we do what God says and apply what we learn from his word, we'll be people of integrity. This is not something to condemn you. I tell you that there's a life that's waiting on every one of us. We'll have hope when others have hopelessness. We'll have security and know where we're going to be because we're the same person no matter what happens. And if we don't apply the scripture to our lives, we become shallow and empty. And at the first little thing, we're gone. We're down. We're out. We're back in sin. We're back doing whatever we were doing before. Same thing. That's why people go through relationship after relationship after relationship after relationship. That's why people jump from church to church to church to church. That's why churches change preachers like they're like they're a, a stinking pair of socks because the preacher lacks integrity. If they get a hold to a preacher, boy, they wouldn't want to get rid of him until Jesus called him home. Integrity comes when a marriage is filled with a man and a woman that are both doing what they're supposed to be doing. But when that is broken, the marriage is fractured, and usually it don't make it. Can I get a witness? Churches are broken when the preacher has no integrity, and people are bought and sold like merchandise, and they change like socks. Come on, somebody. Integrity comes from the Scripture and living the Scripture. We're called to have our yes be yes. And our no be no. A brilliant Christian scholar and writer, C.S. Lewis, took that seriously in his own life. His biography tells of a, a circumstance when he um, he made a promise. He went to World War II and fought in the war, and he promised a friend of his uh, that the friend was worried about the care of his wife and his small daughter, and they were out there fighting. And, uh, and he said, "If I should be killed." And you live. I promise, would you promise me that you would look after me? And the war dragged on, and sure enough, the man died. It was a true story. So true to his word, C.S. Lewis, a devout Christian, he took care of his friend's family. No, no, no matter how helpful he tried to be, the woman was ungrateful unkind, rude, and arrogant. She was domineering, demanding that he do things when he did not need to do them. But through it all, he kept forgiving this woman, and he kept coming back, and he refused to let her actions become an excuse to renege on his promise. And he took care of him their entire life. Because he promised his friend. Shortly after I entered into ministry, um, I went to drop off a couple of suits at the Dry Cleaners. <laughs> I'm not going to say which one, but those of you in Minnesota Todd, you'll know which one. It had one hour cleaner on it. <laughs> that was years ago. <laughs> now you take them on Monday and you hope you get them back by Friday. <laughs> but at that time, was one. they did the cleaning inside the store. 
So you bring something, and if you said, I need this in an hour, they take yours. And it was the one I'm not going to go say which one it was. But, and I had a funeral. And I took, I said, I need that CD in one hour. She said, I can't get that back from you until Friday. And I said, well, there's a sign out here. She said, that's just a sign. She said, there's no way I can take care of a suit in one hour. That's it. I said, well, your sign says, and I stopped doing business with that place because of the lack of integrity. Thought you did dry cleaning in an hour on certain hours. Oh, really? That's just the name of the story. You know, you get that a lot. You get that a lot in places. But we must live up to what we say we are as Christians with integrity. We must live as Christ did according to the Word of God. That's why He gave it to us. That's why He gives us the Word. Many have proclaimed that they accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. And if we were honest, if we were truly honest, are those that saved, so many that say, if they were honest, they, there, there's times that they, Jesus really is not Lord of their life. Have you ever heard the phrase, everybody's in? I've heard that 10,000 times about this church. Everybody's doing it. Why aren't we doing it? We ain't closing this church. If you want to go to church that only has one service a week, go get it. We haven't, if you don't want to come, go, we're having service. And if there's something happens that I can't be here, Brother James or Brother Jonathan or Brother Nick or one of our preachers or even one of our deacons will take this pulpit by storm and preach the gospel. Not even blink about it. Matter of fact, they're trying to push me off of it all the time anyway. They're supposed to be. They're hungry. Everybody's doing it. That's one of the stupid, ignorant phrases that people use to justify the lack of integrity in their lives. I'm going to do it because everybody else is doing it. A person of integrity means you're willing to go against what everybody says. I'm not doing it. It means willing to be willing to stand alone when others won't. It means willing to be isolated. Jesus said they persecuted me. And if you stand for me, they're going to persecute you too. <laughs> I'm going to try and close. I know we're uh, time to close. But Dr. Seuss, children's book. In the book, Horton Hatches and Egg. Anybody ever read it? <laughs> it tells the story of an elephant named Horton who promises to sit on an egg and hatch it for the mother. Lazy Miss Maisie. And as the weeks go by, Brother Cheryl, Horton just keeps sitting there in the nest of a tree. I know it's crazy. All his friends encourage him to forget Lazy Miss Maisie and forget his promise and come play with him. But do you remember what Horton said? Does anybody remember? In the children's book. He said, I said what I meant. An elephant is 100% faithful. Now that's in the children's book. What could God do to a believer that would be 100%? Not 100%. Not 90, not 98, not, not 65, but 100% that had that type of integrity, just like a, a cartoon. A cartoon has more integrity. Hoarding the elephant sitting on a nest up in a tree. Benjamin Franklin on a $100 bill has more integrity than live, living, breathing, born again, bona fide, supposedly Holy Ghost filled, spirit filled, baptized in Jesus Christians. But hoarding the elephant and a dead president on a piece of money has more integrity than a living, breathing, decision-making person. Am I making a point tonight? Jesus makes it clear in St. Matthew chapter 5. He says, but let your communication be yea and nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh to thee. So when we break a promise, we're not just lying to our others, we're lying to ourselves. But more than all that, we're lying to God. In the first century, Israel, the Pharisees, they developed elaborate rules elaborate rules concerning when a man was bound by his word and when he was not. You can go and you can find it in the scripture all in the all kind of rules and laws. If I swear by Jerusalem, I'm bound by my words, it would say. If I swear towards Jerusalem, 
I'm not. If I swear by it, I'm not. I'm bound. But if I swear toward it, I'm not. If I make a promise using God's name, it binds me. But if I can avoid using God's name when I make a promise, I don't have to keep the promise. That was early in the law. So they began to swear by anything. That's why Jesus said, don't you swear by nothing else. They would make oaths on anything. They'd take a shoe. I'm going to let you hold my shoe. I don't want your stinking athlete's foot ranked up shoe. I want your word. I don't need your shoe. You need your shoe. Your feet's ugly anyway. They would take a shoe and make an oath over a stinking shoe. That's scriptural. They would do anything not to keep their word. They were trying to live by a law they could not keep. Therefore, Jesus came and said, you stop the swearing, and you start saying yes or no, and anything else less than that is evil. You let your words be clear. You let your actions be clear. You let your life be an absolute picture of my integrity. When you say, when you name the name of Jesus, you're supposed to look like Jesus. You're supposed to live like Jesus. You're supposed to act like, I'm preaching, y'all ain't saying nobody, but somebody say amen, please. I'm not mad at you. I'm just giving you some scripture. <laughs> I mean, my God, man, he said Jesus came so we could have integrity. Not pass shoes around. I'm going to close here with this. In fact, the whole Jewish book of the law code dealt with making vows and promises and which ones you could keep and which ones you didn't have to keep. There, we, we hear other people do the similar oaths in our own little cross my heart and hope to die. I stick a needle in my eye. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I had my fingers crossed. We have ways of breaking our oaths. I swear on a stack of Bibles, which is translation. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'm dying. Be careful about swearing on your life. May lightning strike me dead if I tell the truth. If I'm not telling the truth, we can do terrible damage to our witness, even by those small things. The world is looking for people like that. They're looking for. The real deal. What do you like for somebody say about you? Things are so really good. She ain't one of them wishy washy songs. Bodies are really good. She can deliver the word. Today more than ever, we need to let our lives be yes. Jesus faces gut wrenching course if my brother Lord's alive. He faces gut wrenching course in his own life. God had been promised a Messiah for 4,000 years. Gone through all the stuff with the Israelites, been silent for 400 years, and God finally spoke to a young girl in her son's home. And he delivered what he said. His son committed no sin, lived a perfect life, blameless, and spotless, Lamb of God. His promise was to send a perfect Lamb to save the world through his death and his resurrection. But when the moment of truth came for Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and Jesus, wearing the same flesh that I wear, and wearing the same flesh that you wear, he felt a burden of the integrity of his father. He felt the full burden of the integrity of Almighty God. There's a burden for us to integrity that you must bear. When the moment of truth came, Jesus said, and he took Simon and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful, very heavy. I want to tell you, sometimes integrity brings heavy burdens to us because people walk away from us. All of his disciples scattered because of his integrity. All of them left him alone to be beaten, killed, and die for. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry here and watch with me. And he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed, O Father, if it be possible, 
Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thou wilt. Be filled with the Holy Ghost of his Father. In fact, he asked his Father, please let it pass from me. And Jesus knows the weight of integrity. And so do we. That moment of truth, he realized there was no other way. And Jesus became the ultimate promise. Holding on to your integrity can be heavy and it can be a lonely place. At times it can be completely isolated, but in the end, it will bring glory to God. There was a man named Job and he lost his, he lost everything. I mean everything. He lost his job, his wealth. He was a multimillionaire if you study the scripture. But there he was so rich, he was the richest man that was known in that day. Lost all of his children through a great storm, lost his health. He was sitting in a pot. He was sitting in a pile of ashes, scraping the, the, the pus pockets off, scraping the scabs off of his skin to let the pus run out of his skin. The Bible says that. He was sitting there with a broken. He didn't have no doctor. He, he was broke. Everybody had left him but his wife. And he was sitting there scraping the scabs off his body because the pain, I believe the pain of, of the, con, the, the, the confinement of the, of the disease was worse than scraping it with a piece of broken glass. A piece of broken glass, he was scraping the scabs off his skin. And his wife said, are you still going to retain your integrity? Just curse God and die. You've lost everything. You've lost your children. You've lost your house. You've lost your millions. You've lost everything. You've lost your friends. You've lost everything. He said, now you're losing me. Will you lose me? He said, woman, you speak as a foolish woman. Do I just praise God when everything's good? Or does my integrity stand in the lowest point in my life? Does my integrity stand when I'm sick? Or do I lose my faith because of what a doctor said? Does my integrity stand because I'm broke? Or do I lose faith because of what the bank says? Come on, somebody. Does my integrity stand because of what Tammy says? I've told her, and I've told you in this church, she may quit church tomorrow, and she may leave, but I will be here Sunday. My integrity will stand. I know she's not. But I've told her, if you don't, if you don't go to church, that's just up to you. I can't, I can't live my life of integrity for you. You've got to do it for yourself. But I'm going, and I'm going to stand with Jesus. And she said, honey, where you go, I go. Because we have a marriage of integrity. Integrity. But whether she comes or not, I'm coming anyway. One child, one child can have a runny diaper and ten people be out of church. Well, the baby had a little virus. Glory to God. Wipe his tail and bring him to church. Come on, somebody. Well, my throat was sore. Get you some chloroceptic, spray it twice and come to church. Have some integrity, church. Have some integrity. As we close tonight. Job said, and I know everybody reads Job when they're down and out. Don't read Job when you're down and out. <laughs> read Job when everything's good, and then you'll get something out of it. You read Job when you're down and out, it's just going, you're just trying to make yourself feel better because somebody else is lower. I'm, I'm like old Job. Ain't nobody here like old Job. You're trying to find somebody a little lower than you so you can wallow in your own sorrow. Stop reading Job and read the good news. Jesus died to give us integrity. The image of the ultimate promise keeper, Jesus Christ, yield to the Holy Ghost now. Let's go. Let the Holy Ghost transform us, transform us into images. I want to I be accused of being a real deal. Nothing else. I don't care if they ever say I'm a great orator or a great singer. If I, try. I don't care if they say I'm a great guitar picker. I probably will never be great in any of those things. I'll never achieve the place and the platform of T.D. Jakes. I, I'll never get, I'm preaching all over the world, but I'll never preach to 30,000. I don't, I don't see it, brother. I, I may, God may, I mean, they may fly me out tomorrow. Y'all going with me if we do. I ain't leaving the church. If I go to church, going with me. They, be, they better send me about 500 plane tickets. Because I will not leave my church for money or fame or fortune. That's why I probably will never do that. Because I will retain my integrity. Brother Rodney, will you retain your integrity when times get tough? When money flows your way? When the opportunity to sin comes and Brother Brad, and it, it just presents itself, say, here I am. Will we say, are you, get out of my face, man. Hold my integrity.
that ever hit back. Tonight's the night. I'm speaking to those that are that are believers. I'm speaking to people that are here tonight that are saved. Uh, I, I think I've seen every one of you in this altar at some point, sometime praying and calling on the name of Jesus. Some have been, just been recently born again, but others have been in the church for a long time. But I'm asking you tonight, do you hold your integrity? And I ask you tonight to call on the name of Jesus. Altar is open. I can't beckon you what to come or how to come, when to come. or I, I can't beckon you tonight. I'm just asking you tonight to just call on the name of the Lord. Let him show you your weakness and increase your strength and restore your integrity. That your yes may be yes and your nay may be nay. Please tonight, let Jesus be your Lord. Don't just let him be Savior. Everybody wants a Savior, but not many people want Lord. Would you come and say, Jesus, tonight you are the Lord of my life. And tonight my integrity is going to stand when others break and run and when others choose the, when others choose the low road, I'm going to stand on your road. When others choose the high road, I'm going to stand on your road. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I ask tonight that you would bless your people as we come. And that our integrity would be solid and sound. And Lord, that we would never bring shame or harm to the name of Jesus. Or the gospel of Jesus. But God, that we would absolutely be those that fulfill your scripture. And that people may see a glimpse of your glory in our life. Lord, I bow my knee now with your people tonight. And I ask that you forgive me of every sin, every weakness, every, every mistake every thought that's unpure every moment of weakness every moment of failure in my life because Lord I want to live a life of integrity Lord whatever I face and ever what we face together as a church as the body of Christ God let us face it with integrity let the strength and the power of God radiate from our lives through your word Lord give us a fresh desire to search the scripture each one of us, God, just to search the Word of God, to find the integrity that you mean for us to live by. Lord, let us be the 100% faithful, integral men and women of God. Father, tonight, let us be what you created us to be. And let us present that to the earth tonight. Those that know you and those that don't need to see the display of true integrity of Jesus tonight. Lord, let us be 100%. Not sold out, God, but bought out by you, by your blood. Bought by your blood. Redeemed by the power of your blood and resurrection. Purchased by integrity. Purchased through the fulfilling of everything that your Father asked you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we need the help. We need the help of the Holy Ghost tonight. Holy Ghost, tonight we pray that you would consume us, and stir us, and inspire us, invigorate us, fill us up tonight to the outpouring into our homes and our families. Baptize us tonight with integrity. Your integrity. Your grace. Your love. I love you, Lord, tonight. I thank you so much. Forgive every sin. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that every person would just ask you the forgiveness of our sins and to wash us and cleanse us white as snow, that we can leave here sinless. I didn't say our whole life would be sinless, but God, we can leave here without any sin. We can leave with integrity tonight, and then we can keep that integrity. So God, forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive us of every mistake, every thought, every every shortcoming, every stumble, every everything, and let us leave here tonight with complete integrity. Let us walk out of this place, God, as men and women of God. And Lord, let us let us be careful not to compromise that integrity with sin or with doubt. So lead us tonight. Forgive us of our sins. Wash us and cleanse us. We confess, God, tonight. We need the blood of Jesus. Let us walk here out of this place in full blown Jesus integrity. Cleansed by your blood. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.